Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com and this is going to be sort of a really advanced, well, more advanced JavaScript video. So if you haven't seen my videos on like my functions masterclass video, my objects masterclass video, and a lot of my basic JavaScript videos, I highly recommend you watch those first because we're going to start really delving into some of the weirder aspects of JavaScript and how it relates to objects. So having some understanding of prototypes and objects and functions beforehand will certainly help. But um, yeah, okay. So let's just first talk about, so we already know what an object is in the sense that an object is something like this. So const my object, it's a key value pair. So equal name Alex um, age 34. I'm sure you're, you're getting, you guys have all memorized my age by now. And then I can put like functions like this. I can be like greet function console.log. Hello. Actually, let me do this in back ticks. Hello. And the cool thing about, see, so you notice I'm using this like this particular function syntax. So not an arrow function. Because the th cool thing about using a non arrow function inside an object is that you have access to the this keyword. So hello, my name is, okay, uh, dollar sign this dot name. Okay, so save. And I can just sit there and I'll do my obj equals, oh, actually my obj dot greet and then run that greet function. Okay, and it should just print, hello, my name is Alex. Because basically this dot name re represents this object's name, which is this. And again, I couldn't do that if this was an arrow function. Because an arrow function is purely a function as a value. And you're gonna appreciate that a lot more in a moment. Okay, well this fun function syntax, what's really going on is that it's, it's essentially a f object in itself. Um, which just makes it more confusing, actually. But you'll see what I mean. Um, or a constructor, in a sense. Uh, so if I hit save. Mm, I want to do node function.js. See, hello, my name is Alex. Neat. OK, and I could create another object. So I could do something like this. We'll say new object equals object dot set prototype of, and the way this works is I pass in an empty object because I want to make a new object. And that's what it's going to return, the new object. So actually put const over here. Uh, const new object. And then a second parameter, you pass in an object that it is the prototype of. So I'm going to say that my obj is the prototype. Now, what does that mean? The way you got to think about it is my obj is the backup. Okay. So this is just an empty object. Okay. New obj. So if I were, so we just do that. And if I were the console.log new obj, it should just give me an empty object. Okay, because it's just an empty object. What you don't see is that it has this prototype of my object. So if I were to do this, my ob new object name, my object is the backup. So first, it's going to look at new object, which is just an empty object, and be like, "Oh, I don't see a name here. So uh, do you got uh, someone else I can talk to? Yeah, you can go talk to uh, uh, my object. Okay, so it'll go check my object." and see that there is a property called name and use that. So this is what's referred to as the prototype chain. As long as an object has a prototype, it'll always then check the prototype for the property if it doesn't exist on the object calling it. So see, it brought it up. And then I can just do this again. So I can do new object two, and its prototype will be new object. Okay, and then I will con console log 
new object 2's name. And it'll do the same thing. It's going to check on new object 2, which doesn't have anything. So then its prototype is new obj. So it's going to check, do you have a name property? No. Do you have a prototype? Yes. And then it works its way all the way back up to my obj. Okay. See, and I have a console line. So this prototype chain can go on forever. So all everything in JavaScript, arrays, sets, maps, objects, are objects. The only difference is that things like arrays, maps, whatnot, they're objects that have kind of a prototype. So they have certain built-in stuff and they refer to that prototype. When you create a class, you're essentially creating a, a prototype object um, that it's referring to in a sense, kind of, because it does have the property. So you're, you're really creating a new object with a template. But now we understand what a prototype is. So you can you can do inheritance just through doing this whole prototype approach. Okay, so that's so now we know what a prototype with an object is. So got it. So that's the first lesson. Okay, so objects in JavaScript have this prototype thing, and you could actually create like like just a template object, and then uh, so you know so for. Well, well, we'll do the we'll do a factory function in a moment. Cool. So I just let that whole prototype thing sit in for a second. Now what I want to talk about is constructors. Okay. So y if you've learned JavaScript recently, you're probably used to uh, class constructors being like this. So like class, say ninja. Okay. Constructor. Um, name so we're gonna say hey this ninja has a name that's passed in when you create the ninja and so on construction this dot name equals the name okay so that would be your class so now if I want to create a new ninja class or I mean const uh, Ryu equals a new ninja and the constructor takes in a argument of name, so I'm going to pass in Ryu, and that's going to create a new ninja object with the property of name. So if I console.log Ryu, save, and then we run it, and see you have a ninja with the name of Ryu. So a class creates that sort of, it says, okay, hey, this is an object of this type because it was created from this constructor function and the constructor function is named ninja. Okay, so these are objects created from that constructor. The thing is that uh, I think this whole class keyword thing didn't come until later. I, it would already exist by the time I got the JavaScript. But what I didn't realize till recently is that you could do this without a class at all. Okay, every function in the old syntax was already a constructor by default, um, which is weird. Uh, I didn't realize until I saw someone's syntax in their code and I was like baffled when they were calling the new keyword on a function they wrote. And I was like, wait, let me go play around with this. So essentially what I could do is you could do this. You could do function ninja. Okay, do that. Delete the constructor here. You don't need a constructor anymore because the function is the constructor. It's gonna take a parameter named name. And you just do that. And this will literally pretty much work the same. See? So just a normal function can name properties, can assign itself properties and generate an object. But only if it's the old school syntax. So that could have been that could have been like this, or I could have done it like this. Const ninja equals. Either of these would work. See? Because that old school, when you use that function keyword, that function constructs an object. Um, and you may never use that object because you may not be using the new keyword. Um, and you may not be assigning it any properties. You're just creating a function in itself. But it's theoretically creating this object every time you run the function. Um, or every time you use the new keyword. So that's a weird thing because it's not clear that it does that, which is why I'm glad they've added syntax. It's a lot clearer, like class. Um, 
but and then make things more clear so class makes creating these constructor functions much more clear and arrow functions also make functions just functions not this this weird object function hybrid so if i were to change this into an arrow function this won't work anymore okay because this is just purely a function it is not some weird constructor so if i run this it's going to give me a problem see ninja is not a constructor because arrow functions are pure functions that's why they can't use the this keyword okay so that's and when the function as far as my understanding goes when you're creating an object and you put an op a function inside the object i'm assuming that the object that it's within sets adds that as a prototype i guess because that way it calls it something like that um it's interesting how that that still not fully appreciating how like all that intertwines in in its behind the scenes implementation in that situation but it's it's cool so you can see here like a normal function the older syntax is a constructor arrow function is not and that's why the this keyword no longer works but that's also why you don't have this weird behavior with the this function when you're working in other contexts which is why people like arrow functions and nor do you really need your functions to be a constructor anymore because you have classes and you can use create it and then there's other ways to create objects cool so const ninja ha so let's see here um next thing i want to show you is other ways to create objects so we saw so far a few different ways to create an object you could do um, const you could just declare an object like this okay and just name the properties in there or const you know my object the variable name you could do object dot set prototype of you know and then just kind of do this put an empty object and you're just creating a basic object you could just do an empty object as a prototype of the empty object although and I think there's also you can also do new object okay and then but there you just call the new object and then you assign the properties afterwards so if I console.log my obj save so you just an empty object um, you could do an object from like object from entries okay and the way this works um mm -mm -mm, two entries from entries let's give this a shot basically the way you use you pass it an array and then in that array each item each element in that array is another array with two elements so in this case like name alex age 34 and it'll take this array and create an object out of it so let's test that out I think I did that right nope object from entries is not a constructor uh, might be object entries No, because object.entries would create the array from an existing array. So let me think here. I might be wrong about the syntax. Oh yeah, that's, you know, head over to devnursery.com where you can learn, uh, find all my learning playlists, see all sorts of playlists I've created on pretty much all sorts of things. It's also cool communities you can join, Slack, Discord, Spectrum, meet other developers. Do check it out. But on that note, let's go back to this object dot from entries. Yep. Okay. That looks like what I used from entries, entries, do, 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 do. Yeah, that should be fine. So from entries. Now was it, let me just take a look at the syntax, from entries, yeah, 
that's what I did. Oh, I have a new keyword. That's the that's the issue. There we go. Object out from entries. Okay. I was like, there we go. So that'll create an object based on that. Okay. So that's another way you can create a new object. You could create. Um, and I think even if I if I do object dot create, or if I use the new constructor, I think I might still be able to pass that in. So let me try that out. New save. Let's give it a shot. Um, interesting. You just pass it in like that. Although new object. Okay. Not quite what I wanted to happen, but okay. And then you could do assign new object. This object dot assign. Now, what object dot assign is supposed to do is that it combines two objects and makes them one object. But if you just were to pass in two empty objects, you would just get an object. Okay. Keep in mind, object dot assign or set prototype of just to get an empty object is pointless. But hey, you can do it. It's more interesting when you start combining uh, interesting objects. Cool. So those are a bunch of functions you have available to you. But another thing that's used is what's called a factory function. So people will sit there and think, well, you know, I, I want to create a ninja, but like, because the problem is, let's say I have class ninja. So let's bring back that ninja thing. And then I create like three inherited classes. So there's like class fire ninja class you know a wind ninja you know they control the elements but now I want a, wa a fire and wind ninja the way class inheritance works I can only inherit from either fire ninja or wind ninja so I can't inherit both if I want to have both um, I mean you could use a sign I guess let me actually let's try that okay so First, let's try the old traditional inheritance method. So we'll say ninja, um, and then we'll create a constructor. And the constructor will take name. And then we'll say there's a name. Uh, this dot name equals name. Okay, and then we'll just say, and then that's it. So that's just, you're just a ninja, okay? Let's just say this dot class equals ninja. Okay, now I want Fire Ninja to extend, so extends ninja. I don't need a constructor, I'm just gonna add um actually I am gonna need the constructor. Okay, which will take in still name. We're gonna pass the name into the parents constructor, so super name and then we're also going to specify this dot element and we're going to say equals uh, this so we'll say this dot fire equals true okay and then I'm going to literally do one of these Win ninja extends ninja. Okay, and we'll say this dot wind. Meaning that do they have wind powers? Is it true? Safe. Okay, but notice I can't extend both of them at the same time. I can only extend one class. So if I wanted to make a fire and wind ninja, I'd have to extend one of these two, and then add wind to it, which which means I have to type one of these two things twice. And the idea is we don't want to repeat ourselves. We don't want to type it twice. So let's explore my options with the classes. So let's say here, let's create a ninja of each. Or actually, let's create a function. Um, let's try this out. Okay, const super ninja. This will be an arrow function. Okay, it'll just take a name. And what it's going to do We'll see if this works. It's just me spitballing. Okay. What it's going to do, it's going to return object.assign, because assign is going to 
merge two objects and the two objects it's going to be a new fire ninja passing through the name into the constructor and a new wind ninja um, passing in the name as a constructor okay so that's what the function does so let's say we want to make Bob the super ninja so const Bob equals super ninja Bob and let's console.log Bob okay because this could show us a way how to do composition with classes if this works save so the hope is that you have an object with all the properties okay we have Bob who is a fire ninja he ended up taking the fire ninja constructor because that's what you use first but he now has the properties of fire and wind so you could do this you could use you could do composition you could use classes and do composition this way okay so that's that's cool okay um, yeah okay so that's that's what composition is when you sit there and you're combining features by just mushing together objects so I'm adding I'm giving this ninja fire and wind powers even though they don't necessarily inherit from each other and I'm able to create other permutations so I'm focusing on what the class does and then what the class is they're both ninja classes but I wanted one that has both so I gave it both so see we created this interesting constructor through super ninja because it passes the name and it's still an, a ninja named Bob who's a ninja who has fire and wind powers so it works because again what happens is this function is called the name is passed into the fire ninja um, thing and basically creates a ninja then it's passed into the wind ninja creates a ninja you have these two ninja objects they get assigned or mushed together the first object takes precedence that's why it's a fire ninja but the, it takes the properties that it doesn't have so these three are all going to be already on there from the original object but the second object doesn't have wind or it doesn't have wind from the second object so it pulls that in that's what happens so you could do that you could create a bunch of classes and then just use assign to do composition in this manner um, or you can do something like this or you know again I could actually get rid of classes altogether and make these a bunch of functions like let's see what that would look like um, let me think about that so if I wanted to do that well I wouldn't be able to do the inheritance I'd have to like create an object and then set the prototype of the object and um, let me see here let me remember how you would do that set prototype of okay that makes sense I know I, I think I know what I'm doing okay so what you would have to do is we'll create all these as functions let's just do that first function ninja so parameters and then get rid of this and this essentially that does the same thing and then we'll do the same thing here let's just see if we can make this work again the point of this video is just to kind of see all the different ways that JavaScript lets you do this and just have an appreciation for function and object syntax a little bit more. Okay. This dot fire true. And then ninja, we just will get rid of all this. and get rid of all this okay and then change this to the word function keyword so I'm using the old syntax so these do create an object these I can use new on these um, so then super ninja the way it would have to work is we would return we would have to do it this way so we're gonna do the first object 
would have to be object object dot set prototype uh, let me think about this because I want to create a fire ninja that okay I see okay object dot set prototype of okay and it's going to be a new fire ninja passing in name and I'm going to pass in well not pass in name because it doesn't have name in that function anymore so new fire ninja with a prototype of new ninja there I do need to pass a name and then the second object I'm combining would be a new wind ninja without the name let me just make sure I don't have too many parentheses here yeah I need to get rid of that parentheses okay set prototype of oh no I do want that in there because this is all the first argument right here Okay, I'm creating an, a new object that is a new fire ninja. It's going to return an object that is a new fire ninja mixed with a new ninja. Um, setting this fire ninja with a prototype of ninja. So that way it gets the name and class properties. And a new win ninja. And that just should pretty much end up with the same result. Although when I console log it, I don't think we'll see all the properties. The only property I'd expect that we would see is fi the fire. Or it does not work. So name is not defined. Let's think about that name. Oh, I gotta pass in the parameter. Save. Yep, so we get fire and wind because it mixes those two's properties, but I should still have access to uh, the ninja stuff. So if I do ninja bob dot name I should still get Bob huh? because their prototype is still this new ninja object that was created uh, to be the prototype Whew! now that's a super complicated more complicated than it needs to be way to do that but the point is you could do that with the older syntax so you can see why the class keyword makes things a lot nicer and even all this could be simplified quite a bit. So what I could do is I could do this. Okay. Um, instead of having these functions, using these functions as constructors, I could just have these functions return an object with what I need. Okay. So actually what I'll do is I'll keep name there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this returns an object that has a name property that equals the name and a class property that equals ninja. Okay, so that just returns an object that looks like that. Fire ninja returns an object okay that does that that basically is that we don't even need this keyword at this point it's just fire equals true i don't need a semicolon this returns an object with wind return okay and then i can change this into create ninja and then we'll say name and then we'll say wind or fire and wind. Okay, we can create one big factory function that builds us, that returns us a ninja. So I'm gonna delete all this. Okay. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is to first create OG ninja. So the original ninja, const og ninja, we're going to create a normal ninja, 
using that ninja function. So ninja using that name that you passed in. Okay, and now thing is that we're gonna add to it if there is fire and wind. So then what happens is that if, oh, I need this to be a let, because I'm gonna reassign it, let OG ninja. So if fire is true, then we're going to reassign OG ninja. Okay, it's going to equal an object. And here I'm going to use a spread operator because this is another really fun way to combine objects. I could use object.assign um, and this would achieve the same thing, but I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to do, I want to mix in the uh, original OG ninja with everything it has already. And I want to mix in a you know, uh, whatever is returned by fire ninja. Okay, so that this function will return an object and that object will be spread in there. So essentially the result will be a mixture of these two objects. Okay, and if wind, so only if wind is true, because I'm planning to put in a boolean for these two. Um, if wind Um, if win, then once again, OG Ninja would equal OG Ninja plus a wind ninja. And again, both of them don't need to run, so I can make it win, just win, just fire, and we'll play around with that. Okay, and then what it's going to do after all that, all those ifs then just returns OG Ninja. Okay. Okay, so it's going to do that. So, what's that called now? Create Ninja. So let's try this out. So create Ninja. And first we're going to just say false, false. We're just going to create a, a, a normal Ninja. Okay, and I'm just gonna console.log Bob. Valid shorthand property initializer. What line fire equals true? Oh, this needs to be a property. There we go. Still complaining about something. So let's see, let's see that all my parentheses match up. This matches up with that. That's good. This should be matching up with actually I'm not sure quite what that is matching up with. So I'm going to delete that. Save. Okay, that looks like it's, it's happier. See, we get Bob class ninja because basically created a ninja with Bob, but I did not add wind and I did not add fire. So let's add fire. So let's make fire true. Save. Now he's a ninja with fire. Now let's give him wind as well. True. Okay, and now he has fire and wind. Well, let's say I want to take off the fire. Now he only has wind. So see, I created with this, what this is referred to as a factory function. It creates the object and makes it the way you want it. Now I could kind of do this with um, with classes and stuff like that, but it's just, again, it's just showing you different ways to get to the same place. That's the whole point of this video. It's just showing you that like JavaScript has a lot of uh, ways to get to the same place. Um, and like this is composition in the sense that I didn't have to create all these, this hierarchy of classes Okay, and again, you could have just done this with classes. Um, you know, you could create a class that has a constructor that that adds properties based on you know a bunch of booleans and something like that. You could, um, you know, it's just preference. What do you think reads better? So in this case, you know, we just have a bunch of different objects with different properties, and then we assemble the properties based on the desired result. That's sort of a more composition design 
pattern versus an inheritance design pattern where it's always just like okay we have a ninja then there's a fire ninja that inherits from fire ninja but now there's not possible for me to have a fire and wind ninja that's just not going to happen either way it's fine just depends on what you need for your particular application Whew. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say about objects and functions aside from that I think we kind of see it so you see that you know like normal old syntax functions are also constructors uh, arrow functions are not constructors which is why they don't use the this keyword and you can we saw that sort of an action um, there's lots of ways to create objects using all sorts of different cool built-in object functions and you can pretty much do the same thing you do with classes with just standard fun with, with either the old school functions or with objects and creating functions that create objects like this there's all sorts of ways so we really saw three different ways to construct those objects overarching either by using old school functions as a constructor using functions as a factory for objects uh, creating objects of so more than three or creating classes to create objects of a particular sort of shape and size um, but all the way at the end of the day what you're doing is you're doing object-oriented programming you're encapsulating what you're making and there's different ways to do it and hopefully this um, showed you some cool new tricks may maybe left you some more questions and maybe left you with some new ideas but my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com have a great day and enjoy mm -hmm.